Yeah. So I'm joined now by Mukta Mohammed, CEO of Finance with Mukta, to review some of our top stories in more detail. Good morning, Mukta. You're welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. So the first story is Donald Trump's threat to the <laughs> BRICS nation's 100% tariff imposition on this. But surely, if countries want to get together and build and develop their own currency, what's, what's so... What's the big deal? There's no big deal. My only yeah, I just feel it's hypocritical about these countries because if you look at hypocritical this, about who? Donald but the Trump countries, or no, the, the country, countries. the British country. Okay, because why? if you look at them, most of them, how much business do they do with themselves? And most of them has their foreign reserve in dollars. In dollars, yes. So they, they are not being. Um, if you, you see, that's what we talk about. If you want to have a single currency, you want to have. Um, tr you, you must be doing volume of trade together. That's when single currency makes sense economically. So when you are talking, we want to be BRICS nation behind the scenes. You are signing an agreement with the United States as a nation. There you are saying, no, we don't want to use the dollar. Yeah. So it doesn't really add up. And, and you know, it's very interesting because one of the stories I had in my top picks was the EU entering a bilateral agreement with a, a group of five or six Latin American nations. And it's that type of trade activity should that should potentially define right. the need for a currency. For a currency. Yeah. You look at the EU. Why do they have the, their single euro? Because of the volume of uh, trade between themselves in terms of mm -hmm. transportation. You look at... Um, 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 trade volume, so it's all there. But when you look at this BRICS nation, it's just like, oh, we just gotta want to make sure that oh, we get rid of the U.S. dollars. Maybe because China is trying, China is there. Feel okay, we need to build more relationship with China. Brazil wants to build their own relationship. Yeah. You look at most of those people are the, um, they were in the emerging economy, but they've now become superpower. But they are trying to just create mm. their own niche for themselves. Yeah. So do you think this is really? driven an agenda that's primarily driven by china i personally feel so you do I feel right so. because you know it's one thing to talk about the politics yeah. of a single currency between a group of nations sure. and and the involvement of donald trump so. but there's also the pragmatism which is something that you raise around yeah, the trade volume through the trade volume so donald trump saying he knows as I say, I'll slap 100 percent tariff on you. but but the slapping the threat to slap tariffs must mean that there is perhaps one day a, 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 the possibility that he you believes see, that this could actually become a it, reality. It could happen, but as it stands now, when you look at the volume of trade, he's not taking chances. Sure. If you look at Donald Trump, we get to other stories, you realize that he's very proactive. Sure. He has, he has already hit the ground running with issues that he wants to deal with. Mm -hmm. You will see that in, he's putting um, 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 structure in place mm. because I want to handle this issue. He's coming in, and if you look at it, he's talking about the trade war. He's coming for a trade war, mm. and he knows how to go about it because if you look at him also, he's, he's not a normal politician. Yeah. He's not a normal politician, the kind of normal politician you see. He's just mm -hmm. thinking about, he's just telling you, American first. America first, yeah, we, we totally get that. Really interesting times, because I, I feel like global trade is in the limelight. Of course, Okonje Ewela was re recently mm -hmm. reappointed for five years, but she has a lot of work on her hands. So because we're lot. moving towards a world of bilateralism. Right. Exactly. Insofar as global trade But is again, concerned. you know, what's happening, what's good for him, definitely, is that she, she has a dua. Mm. She could say she's, she could, other than Nigeria, she could answer the U.S. And the U.S., I think he has a good relationship for the U.S. to agree to support him. His bid. Remember before now, even Donald Trump also supported her first bid to become sure. the So I don't think it would be a problem okay, with Okay, very interesting times there with the BRICS nations. Uh, Nigeria has, the Senate restated its dedication to moving the tax reform bill forward. We've talked about this issue so much during the week. It's, it's like a hot topic nationally. Tell us a bit about your key takeaways from all the dynamics and happenings during I the week. I think my key takeaway is that it's a good policy. Right. Um, if you look at the integrity, it makes uh, us to be able to think outside the box. And if the want to federalism is almost coming to an end, you have to add value to get value. Mm -hmm. You don't just say because, oh, you don't want this thing, but you collect VAT on it. Mm -hmm. So it's now, what are you bringing to the table? It's what you bring to the table, then you earn from what you bring to the table. Which means, and not only that, it means if you want to enjoy the value added tax, also you need to empower your people to, to have money so that they can spend. Mm. And so they are consumable. So Nigeria is a consumer-driven economy. So no matter how you see it, then you need to begin to, uh, empowerment of your people is key. Because if you have empowered your people, some states that are even crying, mm. you, they shouldn't be crying because of the kind of population they have. But what you see is that why they are crying about two particular states, because their own population draft to these states and consume. Right, right. So they, they have not really empowered their people. A state like Kano should not be complaining. If you look at the population centers, they are the most popular, they are, they are among the most popular state in Nigeria. So consumption will be high. They should have more value-added tax. 
But because we have been fed, yes, I know their challenge. Okay. The, the, if you look at that tax bill, agricultural sector, yeah. you are going to remove taxes on them. And that is their key. Mm. That's where they normally, that's where they should say, this is what we are bringing to the table. So that's why I think they, 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 they should look at it again. Mm. I, I mean, the arrogancy of the Senate and even the presidency is not, is not, is not good. And also the, the president media team did not do justice to, to this okay, bill. So, so looking at the tax bill, you know, tax is such a controversial issue globally, but what should be the guiding principles? of any tax system, especially in a developing country. Like it this. should be what, it should be, for me, the guiding principle should be justice and equity. Okay. So that's what this bill is. And do you feel that this bill has struck this, it, it has the struck, equity? It, it, cannot be, it cannot be a total good bill. But is it a progressive tax bill? It's a framework? progressive tax bill. It's very progressive, I can mm. say it. But like I said, the media team of the president have not done justice. Yeah, so yeah, they should have articulated you see, you the, see, the You see what's the happening now, the political team spoke before them. Right. So you articulate the business and economic case for a tax bill so that politics doesn't trump up. Tax yeah, is such a, tax it, is naturally it, it, it's, a political look, thing. Look, we talked about the tax bill, I think the last program was here. I said, you know, you are taxing the rich 25%, which is good, fantastic. For me, I don't have anything against it. I mean, he says taxing the rich, but you and I know he's taxing the politicians because the politicians are not even paying so much taxes. Say right. so 25%, which is fantastic. But I said, if you are going to tax them 25%, then you must make sure you have security for them. They don't have to provide their own security. There are a lot of things that are involved in the tax bill, mm -hmm. which is very, very uh, progressive. But unfortunately, like I said, the media team of the president, the media team of the Senate, they have not handled this. Also, who first of all is like they say, there's a local saying in the local palace saying, "Now who first go police station? Now in the win case." <laughs> <laughs> Mukta, you've come again. <laughs> we'll see what, but that's a really good way to round up the story. I'm sure we could discuss it uh, for youngs, but of course we'll be following it very closely here on the rise. Let's go across the pond to the U. US, the uh, president-elect Donald Trump has nominated David Perdue as his China ambassador. What does this nomination tell us as how Trump plans to handle war. China? War. <laughs> Tariff war. Tariff what war. Sort of war. Every war. Yeah. Yo, you see, he hit, that was a hit the ground running. Yeah. He's, but he's, what is it about this Perdue guy that makes you say it's about war? Because he's, 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 he's a, a businessman. He's a businessman. He's a strong businessman. He's, an, he's, he's a man that believes in the po policy of Trump. And he's a hard negotiator. Right. So that's what Trump needs. Trump need. You see, he's not, an, he's not giving an ambassador to the uh, UN. He's not troubled about that. The first thing is China. Mm. We must. Because again, Chinese is becoming a threat to them. And the Chinese are also doing it very well. They are saying, look, we might devalue our currency. And when, when that happens, that means Make China is good. Their yeah, export very, very attractive. Yeah. And the largest market they have is in the US. Mm. And, the, and the, the cost of labor in the U.S. is high. Most of these companies have their labor in, the, in, in, China, in China. And India, yeah. So most of the production that is... So it's going to be a very, very interesting time, like you said. Mm. I'm just looking forward to the drama that will be happening. <laughs> Unfortunately, I thought that when this drama is happening, developing countries but like Nigeria will take opportunities. We'll, 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 we'll take opportunities. But the thing is, maybe some analysts have failed to realize that a, a trade war, a tariff war between the U.S. and China actually potentially spells trouble for the rest of the world. Because Definitely. many developing nations, frontier markets like Nigeria, are importing from China. Do We're you know, trading with China. So there's bound to be ripple you know effects. What will happen? Yeah. You'll begin to see the U.S. also want to be friends. With African nations, okay. you begin to see U.S. trying to go into agreement with EU, with AU, and you know that's where China is. China mm. these days are not only doing agreement with states in Africa; they are doing it with the AU it itself. Yeah, so true. the U.S. have not really been involved in that, and I hope this second coming of Donald Trump, he see Africa as a potential market because in his first term he didn't see us; he didn't even visit any African mm. nation. I hope he's planning to visit one in his second term. Yeah, indeed. Well, Biden did go to Angola. Angola when yeah. it was almost over. But he's already. I mean, look. The significance of that trip is still remains to be seen. I don't see anything in that. It, yeah, it felt more like a box ticking exercise. Yeah. But let's talk about OPEC Plus. Um, OPEC Plus uh, producers, that's the extended coalition, has delayed their plans to earn these output curbs. What is your reading of global Donald markets? Donald Trump. It's Donald all Trump. about Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump have said it that energy costs must go down. Mm. And it won't start with America. So what he's going to do is going to release the reserves. So they need to know what his plans are. So once that plan comes, once he release the reserves, the largest market in the OPEC nations. The prices will drive prices the price, down. It drives prices down. The largest market in OPEC nations are in the U.S. And they have the largest reserve of, 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 of oil and gas. 
And they also have this in, in so the matter is saying, look, we'll stop importation. He has told OPEC, he has never been a fan of high um, um, oil price. And he has, he, once it's coming, you know. So, but my only joy is that a country like Nigeria has been given an opportunity to continue to have 1.5 billion barrel per day. Mm. If we can meet it, that's for me, that's my own takeaway. But as for OPEC, Definitely, it's going to be an interesting time for them. In, indeed, because economically, uh, Donald Trump has some really strong, uh, uh, I guess, ideologies that he's pursuing. Self-sufficiency for America, America and energy production yeah. and energy supply. Of course, self-sufficiency insofar as production of other goods, agriculture, and so, and so this sort of tariff, the manufacturing, production kitchen. of home-based industries. Yeah, look at his kitchen cabinet. Yeah. He have a lot of there. Yeah, he's, he's pushing a lot of things. Yeah, he is clearly, and and it kind of spells a new, if you like, a new world economic order. Exactly. At least for the next four years. The EUs are sh are, sh are, sh are shaking. Mm. Everybody's just waiting. When it comes, let's see how we can negotiate our way through. Yeah. You, 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 even the, even the, even the uh, um, um, Soviet Union, Russia, too, is, doesn't know where he stands any longer. Mm. You are seeing the crisis that is happening in, 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 in Syria now. Yeah. The Russians come not even intervene yeah. because they have their own crisis. At hand. So, interesting times. Interesting Inter times. Mukta, we spent so much time talking about Donald Trump, China. <laughs> it's today is all we, about Trump. It's all about Trump, but, and rightly so, because he is taking over from. We're the talking about the largest economy in the world. Exactly. And the, the war police. Exactly. So, it does make sense. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Look forward to having you back on soon. Thank you. My pleasure, Alice. Thank, thank you. you.